Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for coming today. And this is Snowy Day. I'm Santiago from Chainsafe, and I work as a DevRel for Web3.js. Today's talk is about simplifying the developer experience with Web3 plugins. I would like to start by quoting the latest Electric Capital report, which says that developers overall are down by 24%. Newcomers developers have dropped 52% year over year. And in 2023, the monthly active developers fell by 25%. So the question here is, what can we do to bring more developers to building Web3? And of course, to keep the ones that we already have. If you don't know why developers are important for the industry, um, I will read this from Electric Capital as well, which says that developers build apps that deliver value to users. Apps attract customers, and new customers bring more developers. So if, if all we want is crypto adoption, then we need to attract more builders. They will attract more users, and this will fit the whole cycle, and everyone will be happy. So today's talk is all about developer experience um, and how we can bring more tools for the developers to engage in blockchain and to build in, in Web3. So I'm going to start with a short introduction to Web3.js. Then we are going to see how we can empower developers to build more tools uh, and, and use our products to build more dApps in Web3 as well. After that, I'm going to show you a game changer, versatile development tool, which is Web3 plugins. After that, we are going to see a couple of examples that is the Chainlink Web3 plugin and the Superfluid Web3 plugin as well. And at the end, we are going to explore some opportunities for projects and developers and to see what the Web3 plugins bring into the table of the blockchain industry. So let's just start with a short introduction to Web3.js. Uh, for those who don't know what Web3.js is, Web3.js is a JavaScript and TypeScript library that provides an abstraction over the Ethereum RPC API. This RPC is basically like the language that you need to speak to talk to, to Ethereum. So every time that you want to interact with the blockchain, you need to send these RPC calls. Above in the slide, you can see uh, an example of a JSON, R JSON RPC call that you need to send if you want to get the get block number um, of, the, of the blockchain. And below in the slide, we can see the example of using Web3.js. To install Web3.js, you just need to, to run in the, co in the console npm install Web3. After that, you are able to import the Web3 module. When you import the Web3 module, then you are able to to initialize a provider. And once you initialize a provider, you are ready to go using Web3.js. In this case, I'm using web3.it.getBlockNumber, and this will retrieve the latest uh, block of the, of the network. This is a basic DAP communication flow, uh, just for you to get the whole picture of the DAP interaction. So everything starts when the developer triggers an action in the DAP. If the DAP is using Web3.js, this will connect to a provider and then the provider will be in charge of talking to a blockchain node. And then the blockchain node will either execute the transaction or it can just retrieve the value that you want uh, if you make a call in this case. So this is kind of the back and forth communication of a DAP interaction flow. A short timeline of Web3.js. Everything started back in 2014 with Jeffrey Walk, one of the Ethereum co-founders. Uh, then Merrick from Parity Tech joined him in 2015 to, to took over as a lead of the, the the repository. Then in 2015, the legend Fabian Vogel Steller, the ERC20 standard creator, took over the lead of the, of the repository. Uh, and he's still, until, until now, the number one, the all time number one contributor to the Web3.js repository. Then back in 2020, thanks to the Ethereum Foundation and the Nomic Foundation, Chainsafe took over as a lead maintainer of the library. And since then, we have around 1,000 pull requests for, from external contributors. 18,000 stars in GitHub, and we just released the latest uh, version 4.5 a couple of weeks ago. Some of the milestones that we have um, at Chainsafe with Web3.js is that we refactor and rewrote the whole library from JavaScript to TypeScript. So we released the version 4 in August last year. Uh, now Web3.js is compatible with ECMAScript scripts and CommonJS builds. Uh, we also reduced the library size from 329 kilobytes to 156. We revamped all the documentation, so we have all the APIs, some new guides and tutorials, and we have also videos if you want to check them out on YouTube. 
Uh, the current usage of Web3GS that we have is around 2 million of NPM downloads per month, and we have 12 million of CDN requests as well. So now let's see how we can empower developers to build in Web3. Here we have a list of some well-established Web3 projects in the industry, like Sigma, Acceler, Arbitrum, Avalanche, Chainlink, Uniswap, etc. And all of them share one feature in common. This feature is that all of them provide multiple ways for the developers to interact with their products. So if you want to engage with developers, you need to give them resources to be able to interact with your products. So no tools, no developers, and no developers, no patty. So all what we need in this industry and all what we need to give to the developers is SDKs, software development kits. That's what we need to give to the developers, but also we need to provide them with learning resources so they are able to learn this SDKs, right? And why SDKs? SDKs provide accessibility to your project since you are, you are giving different ways for the developers to use your product. Um, this will also drive more adoption. SDKs are really scalable since this is reusable code that can be used by thousands of people at the same time, and the short learning curve of, an, of, a, of learning an SDK is way easier than learning a whole protocol from scratch. Now let's talk about the game changer versatile development tool, which is Web3 plugins. So these Web3 plugins is a new feature that we just released in the in the Web3 JS version for last year. Uh, we came we came up with this plugin system to provide to projects and developers to create their SDKs. So with these SDKs, you can give interface to the developers. You can extend any Web3.js capabilities without the need of doing a force, a force on, on the Web3.js repo. So um, if you want to create a, a plugin, you just need to install the library by running npm install Web3. Then you are able to import the Web3 plugin base module. After that, you need to create a JavaScript class um, that inherits from this Web3 plugin base. Then you can put a name to your plugin. And after that, you are able to create any method with any functionality that you want with your plugin. You can deploy contracts, listen to events, interact with contracts, send in transactions, or you can also add your own libraries or external libraries as well. So this is how you can create Web3 plugins. It's just as simple as that as, as importing the Web3 plugin base and inherit, uh, the, inherit this module to your JavaScript class. Why? Um, these Web3 plugins are, are good for the industry because the Web3 plugins improve the developer, the developer experience since this provides a really easy way to interact with your products. Uh, the Web3 plugins also gives us some modularity approach to the ecosystem because this, implement, you, this allows you to implement any feature that you want with, or any functionality, like a plug and play tool that you have. Um, also, this is a lot of reusable code, so this will improve uh, the development process and will make it faster for developers. Also, Web3 plugins are really easy to maintain. Since the Web3.js version 4 release, Web3.js is really stable now. So you don't have to worry about breaking changes or critical issues. So we watch your back here. Uh, for some specific cases, like the Superfluid, you will see later, we also provide um, some kind of off-chain interface. So this can help you to, to save some gas fees as well. And Web3 plugins bridges the gap between Web3 web and Web2. Um, since we'll, this will give like a really easy way for Web2 developers to get started building Web3. Now let's see some example of plugins. The first one is the Chainlink Data Feed plugin. So for those who don't know what Chainlink Data Feed is, Chainlink Data Feed is basically a bunch of contracts on chain that allows you to retrieve the, the price of a specific pair. So if you want to know the price of Bitcoin, you can call the, the contract that has the BTC USD um, price, and then they will retrieve the, the Bitcoin price in USD. Um, the standard way to interact with the Chainlink data feed services, you need to first search for the ABI of the contract. After that, you need to search for the address of the contract that you want to call. Once you have the ABI and the address of the contract, you are able to initialize the contract. And once you initialize the contract, you can make the call to the contract. And finally, you can show the result or whatever that you want to do with this, with this result. But using the Web3, the Chainlink Web3 plugin, 
you don't need to search for any ABIs. You don't need to search for any contract addresses, because these things are already stored within the plugin. So you can just directly initialize the plugin. You can make the call to the plugin, and then you will get the result. If we translate this into code, the standard whale will look something like this. You need to import the ABI here. After you import the ABI, then you have the contract address here. Um, then you can initialize the, the, the contract by typing web3.eth.contract and passing as a parameter the ABI and the contract address. After that, you can call the contract. And finally, you will get the result. And then using the Chainlink Web3 plugin, you just need to first initialize the plugin by typing new Chainlink plugin, then calling the plugin by, by typing Chainlink plugin.getPrice. This is the function that will give you the price that will make the call to the contract in the background. And then as a parameter, you can send the pair that you want to look for, in this case, BTC USD. And then you can just show the result. Superfluid example. So for those who don't know what Superfluid is, Superfluid is an asset streaming protocol that allows you to, to do real-time crypto transfer. And this is used by DAOs, games, DeFi, and Web3 businesses. So Superfluid is, superfluid is much more complex than this, but in a really easy way to understand, uh, superflu Superfluid has a main host contract. This contains all the core functionalities of the Superfluid protocol. And it has some forwarders that allows the developers to communicate with this host. So if you are a developer and you want to build in Superfluid, you need to call this forwarders contract. Then the forwarder will talk to the host. And this is the, the back and forth communication. So with the Superfluid Web3 plugin, these functionalities of, of the forwarders are stored within the plugin, which is on ch of chain. So developers can talk directly to the host, skipping this step of, of talking to the forwarders. So this will improve the developer experience, because this will allow the developers to talk directly to the host, since direct communication to the host will require more knowledge of the deeper mechanisms of Superfluid. But with the Web3 plugin, you don't need to, to know everything about Superfluid to be able to use it. This will also reduce the, in, the blockchain interactions that you have. So that's, that, will, that will have less transactions by using the Web3 plugin, because the Web3 plugin is off-chain, and we don't have the forwarders anymore. And finally, this will reduce the gas fees for the final user, because we have less, less blockchain interactions. Uh, now let's see some opportunities that the Web3 plugins are bringing into the table for projects and developers. So some of the use cases that we have found so far are for oracles, DEXs, layer ones, layer twos, breaches, and even gaming as well. Uh, but we are exploring more opportunities and use cases for the, for the Web3 plugins. Uh, what you can do with the Web3 plugins is custom RPC calls, cross-chain communications. You can build the SDK for your project, for your protocol, um, or even for your specific game, whatever that you have. Uh, you can make Oracle calls, the contract wrappers as well, to store ABIs and contract addresses in the plugin. Uh, this is a really easy way to provide Web3 APIs to Web3 developers, so they can get started faster to build without knowing all the deeper mechanisms of blockchain or specific protocols. So it's just like giving, in a, in a really easy way, to the, to the Web2 developers these APIs that just require some Java, JavaScript knowledge, and then they can, start, they can get started building dApps. Uh, you can also do automated transactions or reactions, complex fu function arguments, and custom logic or any functionality that you want to add, even your library as well. And for developers, we have um, an idea tone with Learn Web3 DAO that we are hosting in March. Uh, so in case that you want to participate, you have some ideas of plugins. You don't need to develop them, but we have some specific criteria for this idea tone. Uh, that starts in March 18, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, we also have a build a ton with, build, with push protocol in case that you want to implement some plugin ideas that you already have. And if you want to get started building plugins, so you can visit docs, um, docs.web3js.org. Um, and to answer the initial question of this presentation is, what can we do to bring more developers to building Web3? So the final answers are tools, as the case, and learning resources so the developers are able to learn these tools. So you can find us here on Twitter, chainsafe th at the end, uh, also web3 underscore js. Uh, you can also text me if you have any question, if you want to learn more about web3 plugins, if you want to build with web3.js, wallet integration, blockchain interaction, whatever that you need. 
Um, and if you want to get started using some plugins that we already have, you can go to web3js.org slash plugins. And to finalize this presentation, I would like to, to come to, to talk about this analogy that came to my mind when I was planning this presentation, um, which is that we don't really know to understand all the, um, all the mechanisms, or all the deeper core functionalities of everything to be able to use it. For example, as a developer, sometimes we don't know everything about Uniswap, but we just need to know how to create a pair or make a swap or to be able to remove an ad liquidity to, to create an app using Uniswap, right? Or for most of the users or even developers, we don't need to know all the latest and all the deeper mechanisms of encryption. We don't know how the elliptic curve signature algorithm works, but we all use MetaMask, we all use encryption, we all uh, interact with contracts and send transactions, right? So we don't need to know how things work. We just need to know how to use them. Um, thank you.